So, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, thanks to EAA, to Andrew and Leonard for the conference and for the host of the symposium. I'm a PhD researcher at Teesside University, where I have been applying advanced analytical digital methods uh, to burn human remains. So part of my work involves digital imaging, and as this area of my research developed, I started to think more and more about issues regarding digital ethics for the dead. As I consider the digitization of the analog dead within my project, I realized that as archaeologists, we lack a standard ethical approach for the digitization of the dead. Furthermore, I also noticed that within our new synthetic words, there is an even greater gap in our approach to the analysis of the born digital dead, who will be the subject of much new archaeological research. So today I would like to provide you an overview of some of the issues we face as archaeologists working with the digital dead and propose some approach to tackle these gaps. These ideas are discussed in more details in my paper, which is about to be released in the AP Journal's Special Edition on Contemporary Death. So, digital death is a consequence of the change in communications and networking technologies, which revolutionized human existence, democratizing data creation, storage, and distribution as the Web 2.0 progressed through the hypercycle and social networks build a business model by digitizing real interactions encapsulated in Facebook social graph. The result is that we now live in a digital world, but we also die and mourn online. And in doing so, we develop new practices and ways of experience death. However, researchers are still in the initial stages of understanding the significance of digital death in archaeological terms. But what do I mean by digital death? So digital death can be defined as relating to any aspects of death made digital. But within this definition, we can distinguish two main concepts, the born digital death, dead, and the digitization of the analog dead. The analog dead are those who lived and died without creating digital content, but whose data might be digitized by researchers. On the other hand, the term born Digital dead refers to those who spend at least part of their lives generating digital content. These new types of death provoke theoretical discussions about how archaeologists should create, manage, and investigate data for the born, digital, and analog dead. Firstly, uh, we'll, like, uh, we'll look at some of the issues we face in the management and interpretation of the data for the born digital dead. So born digital death uh, encompasses the combination of the footprint of linked data created by individuals, including comments, GIFs, videos, and emails, which is enriched by added through the new digital funerary practices of remembrance. Born digital death is a postmodern event, which is different from the traditional death that took place within communities and from the so-called modern death in homes and hospitals. Conversations with the dead, which were previously highly formalized and private, now take place in public in online communities of diverse mourners. For example, up to 50% of the comments in online cemetery memorials books are from strangers. And virtual church communities such as some pixels now hold memorials for participants who they have never met in person. However, although digitizing social interactions was a core part of the new digital enterprise, such as Facebook, a lack of a structured thought regarding these interactions caused issues. In 2006, my deaf space group or MySpace led to trolling on the walls of dead users. And in another more recent case, Paul Hind led guilt to trolling to bit pages for the recent deceased young people just last month. In other situations, family members were either unaware of the digital assets of the dead or lacked control due to restrictive policies. On early Facebook, poor mechanisms for reporting that users page, those that users page often led to accounts becoming internet ghosts. 
But the logic of human mortality review that the population of that uses would only to grow controls were improved and the concept of thanatosensitivity were developed to consider design in death and for death. Facebook allowed permanent memorization of accounts following campaigns in 2007 and include the query, after a person dies, what should happen to our online identity in a list of hard self-imposed questions. When analyzing born digital death on these platforms, archaeologists should consider two aspects. The force is the tension between privacy, control, and remembrance, which has intensified in online spaces as a phenomenon in the way which humans interact with the dead in a digital age. The second is that archaeological analysis of this type of funerary process will be a learning process in the face of the new rapidly changed technologies which even the developers are struggling to manage. One approach for interpreting digital death is to consider these synthetic words as virtual mnemonic landscapes, like physical funerary monuments. In addition, uh, although digital reactions to death take a new form, they might follow many of the principles of the passage, rites of passage, and ritual uh, funerary theory and ritual theory. As such, the digital landscape of death, including online memorials, virtual cemeteries, and social networks, might be assessed through the lenses of funerary frameworks currently applied to the physical mortuary mnemonic landscapes and monuments. These frameworks uh, they emphasize that the landscape can, be, can embody memory such as runestones memorializing death in Scandinavian landscapes of Vikings. Landscape features become vital parts of memorial funerary practice in the Neolithic, and pyramids as monuments representing the dead in ancient Egypt. Another implication of the born digital death is the potential for digital reincarnation. Content can be revitalized to the, crea the creation uh, the so-called digital zombies, through replace of performances, such as the appearance of Freddie Mercury or the visual at recent Queen concerts. And beyond this, there is a growing discussion, discussion discourse I'm sorry, regarding active digital estate planning. In some cases, digital tools have been used to document the entire life of the users, such as Life Not and My Life Bits. Another example, uh, here after Institute, a conceptual artist installation by Gabriel Garcia Colombo was designed to get people to consider what will happen to their digital remains using concepts such as revitalization in virtual bot software and memorization by 3D body scanning, VR facilitated memory reconstruction, digital records and memorial data service. The concept of revitalization through data is a variation on symbolic immortality. But now, technology can combine data with artificial intelligence to create virtual avatars that provide a digital way to immortality, provoking fundamental questions about the link between the person and the physical body, remind, rendering humans as a pattern of data or cyber so. Fictional TV series have explored this topic, including Black Mirror, where AI was applied to social media data to recreate the disease, and Altered Carbon, where humans store their conscience digitally. In reality, apps already exist which apply AI to social media and other data archives to create chatbots for us to interact with the dead. Archaeologists must now uh, consider the impact of such technologies on the growing stories of social media data and assess the importance and significance of algorithmic bias that might be incorporated when using such technologies to investigate the born digital net. Beyond self-documentation, AI and chatbots were also using another media to explore stories of the dead, including video games. 
The representation of death in games has historically been challenged due to the paradigm, paradigm of ludology, where death can be simply represent a mechanism to manage failure. However, some designs are increasingly concerned with Panato sensitivity, provoking users to think more profoundly about death. An example, that dragon cancer, that tells the story of Joe, a five years old boy who died from cancer. Joe's parents designed the game to present players with choices to each stage of his life, but all ultimately result in his death. Inciting the user to explore and contemplate mortality, in a part of me, bereaved young people and experts in child psychology design a game to help families to cope with grief by providing an engaging space to help families to talk, build their emotional resilience, and store digital memories, memories of the deceased. New games even document funerary treatments, such as a mortician's tale, where the player becomes a mortician, preparing bodies for embalming, burial, and cremation, while learning about the treatment of the dead. These are only some examples of the many video games which indicate how digital culture is both influencing and documenting contemporary death. As archaeologists, we should also consider methods we will use to study these forms of storytelling and material culture, what metadata we require with the games, and how we will converse the information in data and the data that they hold. Beyond digital death, researchers are also documenting the dead in physical spaces of death, online by transforming the analog dead into digital data. The term digital public motor archaeology has been coined to refer to the creation and emergence with any digital content concerning the dead, including digital platforms for sharing information such as digitized disease, blogs, blogs, Digital mortuary documentation also extends to crowdsourcing platforms for recording standing cemeteries and memorial. The Hard Island project documented unclaimed bodies in New York City, unmarked mass graves. Another project, Facing the Nameless, crowdsourced names for 3D scanned cadavers of unknown individuals. These projects present the analog that online in an inherently, inherently public form. But there are a series of there are a series of ethical challenges for archaeologists and other researchers attempting to, di attempting, attempting to digitize the analog dead. These challenges encompass different states of process through recording, sharing, and story. Although ethical guidelines for the treatment of human remains already exist to help us to address this challenge, most draw on museology and very few address the ethics of digitization. The gap Stimulate debates at recent conferences include HEA 2013, EAA 2015, WACA 2016, regarding the ethic creation and sharing of digitized human remains and archaeological data. Ultimately, these questions form a part of a broader discussion regarding the ethics of the process of analyzing human remains and depending on the different cultural historical context of research project. One key aspect of current guidelines is the requirement for consent from the affected communities and the need for contextualization data to accompany the remains to justify display. However, in my review of the digital archaeological data sharing practices online on Sketchfab, published in a paper released this week in the Archaeologist Journal, I found that many models of human remains had almost no contextualizing data. Furthermore, some of the 3D image had thousands of views and were available for use, modification, and public download, meaning that they could be modified, reused, and 3D printed at will. Poorly documented collection pose a threat as they have heavily little value as a tool research for research and educational use, as well as public engagement. To attempt to address these issues, I create a matrix. The assessment of how and when digital representations of the dead should be displayed online, which is shared in my college spectrum. These variables for assessment fall in two broad categories. As we can see, firstly, there are the situation variables, which include consultation, local legislation, and contextual discretion. 
on the other axis, there are the nature-related variables, the identification and the states of the individuals, circumstances of death, and time since death. Beyond the, cha uh, the ethical challenge regarding the sharing of data, archaeologists are studying both for the analog and digital data now also face new challenges regarding the persistence of technology. The fate of Geoset's <laughs> website was 2009 exemplifies the fundamental nature of this challenge. Digital data is not undescribable. Significant work is required to assure preservation and conservation in a digital realm as service, software and games are often rendered obsolete of, uh, after a relatively short period of time. Furthermore, as data becomes highly centralized and virtualized using cloud service, archaeology <coughs> might be restricted to salvaging from a small number of global data centers such as Facebook's facilities. In this case, well-planned conservation and storage efforts such as Internet Archive alongside open data standards will be required to ensure future access. Cloud storage also heralds the year of big data, which presents research with the complex issue of quantity. There is already a physical crisis of unanalyzed physical material from many excavations, as we know, and big data may just unleash another crisis. Unanalyzed and high complex data sets are a phenomenon which scholars are already attempting to address on a smaller scale through multiple open initiatives. Archaeologists need to be able to develop algorithms and implement sampling strategies in order to obtain meaningful insights in this huge data set, particularly where they are unstructured and lack harmonization. Finally, as we have seen through the presentation, the emergency of contemporary born digital death and the digitization of the analog death pose multiple challenges and opportunities for archaeological practice. In the case of the born digital death, many of the challenges remain as present as those by, faced by 17th century antiquarians, such as Sir Thomas Brown, who in the study the Grey Cemetery tombs and monuments aspired to understand the motivations and choices of this past people concerned how they used material culture and commemorate the dead. Archaeologists exploring the new discursive mnemonic digital landscapes now require new approach to existing theoretical concepts concepts in order to analyze and understand new forms of funerary practices. As we create the data of both, both the analog and born digital death online, we should remain critically aware of the best practices and approach to ensure that data and digital culture is both managing and designed ethically and preserved for future generations. Thanks for listening.